So let's look, first of all, at the lust of the flesh. What is lust of the flesh? It's passions. You have passions. We all have things that we get passionate about. But the question is, are you so passionate that you worship those things? Do you worship food? Do you worship sports or gaming or entertainment? If you do those time, money, and food logs that I told you about, you'll figure it out. You'll know what you worship. Or if it's just something that you happen to enjoy, but you worship God. That's up to you. You can answer that. But if anything takes priority over God, you worship it. It's an idol to you. There's a reason why my son, Ethan, will not play on certain sports teams. And the reason is because they play games on Sundays. And it doesn't matter if I was a pastor or not. We wouldn't sign him up because we think it's really important to come and worship with the body of Christ. We think Sunday is an important day because that's the day that we choose to have church together. And so we won't sign him up for those things. But you know what? On Sundays, there's a lot of people playing sports in this country. A lot of people. Remember Paul's point about money. It's the love of money. That's the root of all evil. Do you love these things more than God? Do you love things more than God? Your passions. You can answer that. I can't. You know your heart. I don't know it, but God does. The second thing is the lust of the eyes. Things we want, we covet, we want them. Our possessions, right? Our Americans are not the most materialistic people in the world. We want bigger and better. We want more and more stuff. Our parents got along just fine with a thousand square foot house and one bathroom. Everyone survived. No one died, right? But why do we need 3,000 square foot houses and six bathrooms? I talked to a guy before. He says, yeah, I got six bathrooms. Guess what? They all use the same one. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> right? It's, it's, it's crazy. This is the world we live in. This is the country we live in. Do you worship your possessions? It's time to get kind of right. <laughs> Go through those possessions. Have you ever heard of Project 333? Practical things I try to throw out for you to think about. Project 333, kind of a cool thing. Pick out 33 objects of clothing. You have to look up all the rules. 33, and wear them for three months. That's it. You got 33 things to wear for three months. It's a challenge. Does your possessions possess you? Do you love things more than God? Only you can answer that, because you know your heart. Third thing is pride of life. The positions of power. Any control freaks in the house today? Just go ahead and raise your hand. If you're a control freak, you know who you are. And uh, if you're looking around and the person you know is a control freak and they're not, raise two, they're in denial. <laughs> I used to love it when my parents would say, Matt, um, we're going to go out. I have a younger brother and younger sister I live with. Uh, we're going to go out and uh, you're in charge. Love those words. You're in charge, right? I used to love that. You know? You know, all the, the, the things I'm going to do. But my brother and sister, they never really obeyed me very well, which is why I turned to torture. Usually. Um, I'm kidding, of course I didn't do that, but just a little. Um, there's something though about being in charge, you know, who likes to have a little bit of power, right? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a neat thing, but um, it goes to our heads a lot of times. But I think probably the greatest illusion is that we have power over ourselves. It's the greatest illusion that we actually have control over ourselves. I know you're thinking, I do have control over myself. I make my own decisions. You do, but you can't control the air you just breathe. You can't. You can't control the circumstances that are going to happen when you leave this place today. There are things that are not under your control. And it's not luck, it's not fate, it's not destiny, it's God. God's in control. And we have to get that into our minds and heads. And we have to understand that. Don't sell your soul to gain some position of power. Power comes and goes. And if you have a position of power, don't worship. God will constantly challenge you to give it to Him. I was talking before church about the thing that I think parents probably come close to, if not worship more than anything, is our children. 
we worship our children. And I've been challenged on more than one occasion to present them to God as a gift. To say, God, I recognize these are a gift from you, and I want to give them back to you because even though I'm, they're under my control at this time, you've given me that as a privilege, and they are yours. I, I don't own my children. They came from you. And that's, that's often hard for us to do. Perhaps we take heed to the wisest man who ever lived, Solomon. He said in Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 20, My heart began to despair over all of my toilsome labor under the sun. For a person, they labor with wisdom. And boy, do we not see that today in America, in the corporate world? People working so hard to work up their, their way up the corporate ladder, right? To, to get into these positions of power. And he says, a person may labor with wisdom, knowledge, and skill, and they must then leave it all they own to another who didn't even work for him. And it's meaningless and a great misfortune. What do people get for all this toil and anxious striving with which they labor under the sun? All their days their work is grief and pain. Even at night their minds do not rest. This too is meaningless. Interesting words from Ecclesiastes. American idolatry is everywhere. I hope you see that today. More than anything, I don't want to see you fall into idolatry. I don't want to see you worship things that you shouldn't be worshiping. I want to see you worship the one true living God. We see that from the Church of Thessalonica. They're wonderful examples for us. They turn from idolatry to serve the one true living God. I pray you'll do the same. Let's pray.